All right, looking at the accessory organs, uh, the accessory organs are going to consist of your uterine or fallopian tubes, the uterus, and the vagina are the main ones. So the uterine tubes, oviducts, they're also called oviducts, fallopian tubes, they're suspended by a broad ligament and it's going to lead to the uterus. So when I look at it from the front, the uterus sits in the middle and it's going to go out through two tubes to the ovaries. Near each ovary, the uterine tube expands a little bit to form the infundibulum with fimbrae, fimbrae I think of as little fingers, on its margins or on the outside of it. So the cells lining these tubes have cilia, those little hair-like structures, that are going to beat in unison, and what they do is they draw the egg cell into that uterine tube. And in biology, we watched the one video where you can see that actually it's almost like a heartbeat because everything is in unison. Fertilization typically occurs in the uterine tube. So that being said, when the egg is fertilized by the sperm, the sperm has usually traveled all the way up into the oviducts and are close to the ovaries. After fertilization happens, that fertilized egg or that zygote has to move into the uterus or there will be complications with uh, pregnancy. Another thing that we talk about in biology, you know, is that fertilization doesn't occur, fertilization typically does not ever occur during the act of sex. Typically, fertilization is going to occur hours after as those sperm cells have to move into the oviduct to fertilize the egg. So the top or upper two-thirds of the uterus is called the body and it's kind of dome-shaped when you look at it from the front. The lower third is the cervix and the cervix is going to extend into the vagina. The cervix is the part of the uterus that has to dilate or open uh, during labor. The uterine wall itself has three layers, uh, endometrium, myometrium, and parametrium. Endometriosis is a fairly common issue that um, many women will have, and that is called endometriosis because it affects this endometrium. The uterus typically bends forward and sits over the top of the urinary bladder, like I said earlier. Uh, the vagina itself is just a muscular tube that extends from the uterus to the outside, so basically it's, it's just a tube or a short opening. Uh, the vaginal orifice or opening is partially covered by a membrane called the hymen um, until that is broken, and typically uh, as active as young women are, that's broken at a fairly young age. Uh, the vaginal wall has three layers mucus or mucosal layer. Um, because of the purpose of the vagina, it needs to, it needs to produce a lubrication to prevent uh, any type of what do I want to say, friction. Uh, muscular layer and then an outer fibrous layer. It also is going to have uterine secretions uh, it is where the penis is inserted during sexual intercourse, and it is the birth canal. And that we also talk about a little bit in biology. Your, the vagina is made for intercourse, where other parts of your bodies are not. That mucus layer becomes very important in protecting the inside of the vagina. So here, this is a typical biology picture. So the uterus, here's the body or the top part. The cervix is going to be here, down here at the bottom. If a woman is not pregnant, the cervix is typically closed. It's not open. And when they say you've dilated, you know, two centimeters or whatever, this is the dilation. That's where the dilation actually occurs. And I do like to point out... In a typical childbirth, they like you to be dilated to a 10, and that is 10 centimeters. 
So that is from here to here. So that is not a real large opening for that baby to come through. Uh, anything else? Ovary, here's the ovary. Here's the ligament that holds the ovary in place. However, when the egg is released, uh, these fimbrae are what are going to pull the egg out and the egg is going to travel along the tube and then burrow into the uterus when it starts to divide and grow. Uh, external organs of the reproductive system, vulva is basically the broad term, labia major, labia minor, uh, clitoris, and vestibular organs or glands. Uh, the labia major enclose and protect, basically it's the outer protection of the vaginal area. Uh, they correspond what this is saying is their, their job is similar to the scrotum in the male. Uh, the anterior ends meet to form what is called the mons pubis. Uh, labia minor are more flat. They're also lo uh, longitudinal. They are found inside or between the labia major and basically they typically protect the clitoris. Um, blood vessels that are in this area cause it to appear a little bit more pink in color than the outside uh, labium major. Uh, the clitoris is erectile tissue. It is very, there are a lot of nerve cells that are found there. Like I pointed out, it's at the anterior end. Uh, and there, like I said, it corresponds to the outside of the penis in their structure and their function. Vestibule is simply a space, and that space is protected by the labia minor, and that's where the va uh, vagina is going to open, and then the urethra is going to open in front of that. Vestibular glands lie on either side of the vaginal opening, uh, they are kind of similar to the vulvo-urethral glands. And basically the vestibular glands for a female are there simply to provide lubrication. And there is the table that pretty much covers everything that we've talked about. Um, during periods of sexual stimulation, the tissues of the clitoris and the vestibular glands or bulbs also fill with blood, which is similar to what happens in the male. Um, nitric oxide is basically the stimulant that produces the blood to rush or to flow there. Um, so during sexual stimulation, those vestibular glands are going to secrete a mucus which, like I said, is important for protection of the inside of the vagina. And then during orgasm, the muscles of the perineum, the uterus itself, the uterine tubes contract, and that contraction, they believe, is important in pulling the sperm up towards the egg. So those contractions, they believe, are part of the function to help to pull the sperm to get them to the egg where fertilization can take place. And that's where we'll stop.